In today's video, we're talking about things outside of your control on a run, how things like heat or cold, humidity, and even altitude affect your runs, and particularly how it affects your training, and what you need to do to adjust if you do live in an extremely hot or an extremely cold, humid, or if you live at high altitude as well. My name is Brad, I'm from CoachParry.com, where we help you become fitter, faster, and stronger. Joined by our head coach today, Lindsay Parry, to talk about pretty much everything I've just said in this introduction. And don't forget, if you get any value out of our videos, please do hit the, the like button. Uh, and if you have any questions or if there's something you'd like us to cover in an upcoming video, feel free to pop that in the comments below. Lindsay, this is a question we get quite often on the forums of the Coach Parry training app, and it's got to do with climatic conditions, uh, essentially uh, around running and the impact of temperature, both hot and cold, things like uh, humidity, and then one that's not climatic, but obviously is wherever you are, is altitude. Let's talk about the impact of these sorts of things on your runs. And, and I think let's talk about temperature first. People think uh, hot temperature, and we've spoken about it, but let, let's talk hot first, then cold, and then we'll touch on altitude and, uh, and, uh, and, and humidity. What impact does heat have on, on running? Yeah, so look, I'll touch on the heat and humidity together because they essentially work together. In a very hot environment, of course, there's going to be a physiological trade-off in our ability to perform. Um, but humidity just compounds that. So when it's very hot, our body is quite efficient at getting rid of heat. So there will be some impact. We'll talk about that now. But when it's humid, it really affects our body's ability to shunt heat. So a hot, humid environment is actually quite similar to altitude in terms of how it impacts us. But on a very basic level, the obvious thing to a person that they will experience is that as it gets hotter, there is a very definite increase in our heart rate. And coupled with that is an increase in our perceived exertion, how difficult it is to exercise. And really all that's happening is that when we are exercising in a very hot environment, we are increasing our heart rate so that we can transport more blood to the skin as well as to the muscles where the blood is needed so that the oxygen and the and the energy substrate etc can go to the working muscles but it also increases circulation to the skin because then when that blood is close to the skin we can then shed heat in two ways number one by sweating more the evaporation of that sweat causes the cooling of our skin and then that will in turn cool the blood as it goes past and then the second mechanism is that as that heat goes past uh, or the blood goes past the skin, it also in uh, uh, equal but opposite terms, as it cools, it's also shedding and giving off that heat at, at the skin. So that's the reason heart rate goes up. It's the reason our perceived ex exertion goes up. If we then add humidity, that is why you literally sweat buckets because your body is now trying to give off this heat in the same way, but, but it can't because evaporation is much slower and lower and so now we've got much more reliance on just that difference in heat because we will still be hotter than an environment so we'll still give off some heat but we'll give off of less heat so heart rate goes up even higher so we can get even more skin uh, uh, blood to the skin and that is how how that mechanism would work when we get cold it's better for our bodies because as we exercise, we are generating heat. It is better for us to be in, in cool to mildly cold environments. I'd say probably the ideal temperature sits somewhere between 8 and 14 degrees Celsius is the best sort of temperature for, for us to exercise in. As we get colder than that, then our body also gets placed under very stressful conditions and so we need to do things to help warm up the core and then it'll spread that to the the periphery so again the heart rate will go up because now it wants that warmer blood to go to the peripheries because if we can keep the periphery warmer um, then it the whole system will, will shut down less so we put on insulating layers and if we put on those insulating layers then once the 
body is able to warm up those extremities, it won't keep losing heat out of those e extremities. Of course, if we don't assist by putting on those warmer layers of, of clothing, then our heart rate will stay high because we're going to have to keep shunting warm blood out, cool in, warm out, cool in. Um, and so that's really the the how we affect environment temperatures. So the same way, in terms of what can we do about it, the forehead is quite a large surface area. So if we are running in very hot conditions, we want to allow the forehead to give off heat. Of course, typically, the sun is also a problem in places where it's very heat. So we tend to wear caps to keep ourselves um, protected from the sun. But then we need to keep the the part of the forehead that, or the part that's in contact with the cap we need to keep that moist wet cool because then we'll still lose a, a lot of um, heat that way and similarly when we're running in very cold conditions we want to keep that closed keep your hands closed keep your so a beanie or something along those lines that will also just help to insulate and keep all the, the heat in if we move across to, to altitude, the impact is fairly similar in terms of our impact on performance, um, but it's quite a different mechanism. Quite, in a nutshell, what happens is as we go higher in altitude, there is a change in the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere. That really just means that there's less oxygen available. But because that partial pressure is lower, when it gets into the lungs and it needs to bind to a hemoglobin, that hemoglobin relies on an increased partial pressure outside because our um, hemoglobin has given off oxygens as it's gone around the body. When it comes back to the sides of the lungs, it's got spaces where it can bind extra oxygens. And at a lower partial pressure, that process is less efficient Plus, there's actually just quite simply less oxygen. So the body's compensation is twofold. One is to increase the number of bl red blood cells, but that takes a little bit of time because it has to ignite the factories and get everything going. Um, and so that improves every 12 hours that we are at altitude and typically takes two to three days before we won't really notice the impact, but it then takes seven to nine days for full adaptation to take place. And even with that full adaptation, again, because of that lower pressure and that inability to bind as efficiently, even with more red blood cells, you will never be able to perform at altitude at the same level as you can perform um, down at sea level. Subsequently, it's also the reason why people train high and compete low. Because once we've made all those adaptations and we come down, now we've got this system that's geared towards just grabbing oxygen. And so it improves in, in um, endurance performance uh, down at the coast. But yes, when we now up at altitude performing, we will have higher heart rates. Because again, we if we move the blood past there faster, we can make up for the inefficiency as well as the decreased amount of oxygen. We can still supply oxygen to the working muscles but there's going to be a trade-off in performance heat and humidity and altitude probably impact between four and seven percent highly conditioned individuals there's probably a four percent drop off in performance when you're going from low to high and an increase of four percent when you go from high to low and in unconditioned um, individuals that is probably about a seven percent change in performance across the two i'm glad you spoke about the the performance because that's exactly what i want to ask it's it's now we understand what it does how does it impact your performance and how can you adjust obviously if you are living in a place that and, and let's talk training not necessarily just racing but l let's say for instance you live in a place that gets extremely hot and humid should you expect to hit the numbers you want to be hitting or do you need to adjust your training same applies to cold and obviously you've explained the the difference in performance uh, at altitude yeah, look, that's where training to heart rate becomes very useful. You will adjust your heart rate zone. So as soon as you get into very hot, I would say you want to add around five to eight beats per um, minute to what you would normally 
perform at in more temperate conditions. And if you add humidity, I would make that to about 8 to 12 beats higher because that's probably around about the level where you can feel safe that you're getting the same physiological adaptation in terms of an aerobic me metabolism point of view. When you're running hard, you will increase your heat even more. And so you need to adjust those sessions and that will take a little bit of, of learning. You want to run hard, but you don't want to run so hard that your body loses its ability to keep up. A and you'll know because you literally will feel like you, you're going to explode and you will slow down. So that'll take two or three weeks to learn how to manipulate your interval sessions, hill sessions, that kind of thing. But for your easy runs, if you adapt that heart rate, um, and you add 5 to 8 beats or 8 to 12 beats, depending on just how bad the, those environmental conditions are, you will run slower. So what we're, what we're not saying, so that's why pace is not a good one to use because at that higher heart rate, we're making some allowance for the environmental conditions. But even at that allowance, we're still going to run slower because your body must reduce the amount of work that is being done because it has to reduce the, the amount of energy that's um, not energy heat that's being produced otherwise it'll lose control of the system um, altitude works similarly except that you will f physically feel like somebody's just got a little squeeze on so you're not going to feel like you're getting enough oxygen so it's actually we we adjust quicker at altitude and know that we have to run slower when we're going up the first 48 hours in particular, you really just want to take it easy and allow your body to start adapting to the altitude. If you've got an important race up at altitude, you need to give yourself as much time as you can afford to give yourself. One day is better than none, two better than one, three better than etc etc and up to about 10 days is is ideal to give yourself an opportunity to um, compete and then the other thing particularly in longer distance events is when you are are competing at altitude and in in very hot environments and actually this works quite similarly is be kinder to yourself in the first 15 to 20 minutes of exercise allow your body to almost get in zone and find its equilibrium. If you do that, you will be able to perform at a higher level for longer afterwards. If you push yourself into the red immediately, then you're going to be fatigued. Your body's going to go into a bit of an alarm state and go, whoa, we can't do this. And you will feel horrible for most of, of what you're doing and underperform. If you're allowing for an increase in heart rate in the heat, does the converse apply in the cold? So if it's very cold, absolutely, um, because, yeah, and especially, again, in the first 15, 20 minutes of exercise, if you are um, clothed sufficiently, if you've got enough layers on, then in the cold, you will probably get to a point where your heart rate will be fairly normal. Having said that, in the places that it gets that cold, you're probably also dealing with lots of snow, and if you're running off-road, you're dealing with lots of mud, uneven ground. So you also have to take into account that there's an increased degree of difficulty to the actual activity that you're doing. So you're going to get higher heart rates that are reflective of the increase in effort to run in that terrain. And in that instance, you actually need to learn to back off and just accept that in those very cold, snowy conditions, you, you need to run easier. And then here comes the hardest part about training in those conditions is, of course, as soon as you drop below a certain effort level, then your body's not going to be able to warm itself up. So there's a certain level of exertion that's required so we can keep the core warm. Again, clothes come into play there. And we have to accept that, in, that not just the environmental conditions and physical conditions of the road and the, the, tr the track that you're training on also impact when you're training in the, in the very cold.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did get any value, please do smash the like button. And if you've got any questions or follow-up questions or uh, ideas for videos in the future, be sure to pop those in the comments below as well. Also, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button over here. Don't miss any of our upcoming videos. You can also watch our most recent video over here. And you can also check out our most popular video by clicking here.